So I'd, first, I'd like to welcome you all to today's Accelerize webinar. Just so you know, this webinar is being recorded. Um, participants are muted, but you can always ask questions through the chat window available in the WebEx interface. We encourage you to ask questions at any time, and we'll answer them as they were received. So just as an introduction, my name is Gallagher Pryor, and I'm a co-founder of Accelerize. I'm pleased to present today's array fire webinar looking at OpenCL and CUDA trade-offs and comparisons. Every day, we interact with many programmers in various stages of GPU development projects. In making GPU project decisions, there are a lot of information to absorb from a variety of sources. The intent of this webinar is to condense this information into the key points that matter to help you digest GPU computing software decisions. Over the last five years, we've collected information from our GPU computing customers that we've determined, and we've determined that there are five core GPU software features that programmers seek in the technology. So these include, down to the list, first off, performance. This is a core motivation and relates to quality. How good will my code end up is the question here. How fast can I push it? Scalability. This is related to labor costs and quality. If I develop my code on a workstation, can I launch it on a cluster without any major headaches? Portability. This is related to flexibility and cost, both labor costs and fixed hardware costs. It can also lead to a question of quality as freedom to move code to better newer hardware that emerges is important. Community. This is a broad term meant to encompass other terms like support, longevity, commitment, etc. It is important that the technology platform has a lot of users and momentum. It is important that investments made today persist and pay dividends down the road. And finally, programmability, or a sense of how much labor and effort will be required to get good performance. This includes a sense of the software platform's maturity, giving robustness to bugs and availability of functionality. We've arranged this webinar to address these five GPU software features for the two major GPU computing platforms, CUDA and OpenCL. For each of these features, I will share some of our thoughts on how CUDA and OpenCL compare, then I will conclude the discussion of each feature with some comments on how the feature relates to ArrayFire. Those slides have an ArrayFire logo in the upper right-hand corner of the slide so that you know that they're there. So first off, performance. The first feature is performance. Both CUDA and OpenCL are fast, and on GPU devices, they're much faster than the CPU for data parallel codes, with 10x speedups commonly seen on data parallel problems. Both CUDA and OpenCL can fully utilize the hardware. They're both entirely sufficient to extract all the performance available in whatever hardware device, but we italicize the word can here because the devil is really in the details. Performance depends upon a slew of variables, including hardware type, algorithm type, and code quality. It is nearly impossible to guess how much speedup you can extract from a piece of code. In our experience, nearly all science, engineering, and financial codes can get great benefit out of GPU hardware, but the big question is how difficult it is to transform your algorithm to realize those benefits. We'll discuss programmability later on. And just so you know, we're going to present ArrayFire results um, for performance benchmarks at the end of the webinar, so stay tuned for that. The second feature I'll discuss is scalability. Scalability can mean many things, so we've broken this discussion down into three kinds of scaling. From laptops to single GPU machines, both CUDA and OpenCL code scale without any code change. This is a very common use case. We see nearly half of GPU computing users use a laptop at some stage of GPU development and later move the code to a different performance hardware setup like a workstation or cluster. Both CUDA and OpenCL make life easy for this use case. From a single GPU machine to a multi-GPU machine, both CUDA and OpenCL require user management code for low-level synchronization and communication between the multiple GPUs. This is a headache, but with patients, it's manageable by both CUDA and OpenCL. From a multi-GPU cluster machine to a cluster, neither CUDA nor OpenCL really offer much assistance. Rather, programmers tend to write their own MPI code that handles all cluster communication and then use CUDA and OpenCL directly in each, each node. With respect to scalability, there are some other interesting developments of note. The first is that there is some new technology in CUDA-related called GPU Direct that is aimed at reducing memory transfer overheads when communicating between multiple GPUs. It has optimizations to result, reduce overhead by allowing peer-to-peer -peer memory transfers between GPUs on the same DCI Express bus. It also has optimizations to reduce the overhead of moving data from GPU memory to a network interface card. This is certainly an interesting development, but is far too new for us to say that this is actually something people will use. The second interesting development is in mobile GPU computing. OpenCL has quickly become the most pervasive way to do GPU computing on mobile devices, including smartphones and tablets. 
Companies like ARM, Imagination Technologies, Freescale, Qualcomm, Samsung, and others are all enabling their mobile GPUs to run, on, uh, to run open seal codes. There are more mobile devices sold each year than there are PCs, so this is a huge community that is beginning to put its support behind OpenCL. At Accelerize, we have done several GPU consulting projects on mobile GPUs, and the believers that there is a big benefit to accelerating apps, especially computer vision and video processing apps, directly on the smartphone or tablet. So on this side, we discuss how array fire relates to scalability. In scaling from laptops to single GPU machines, array fire's just-in-time compiler automatically makes optimizations for GPU type without any code change. In this sense, both the CUDA and OpenCL versions of ArrayFire enjoy scalability here. From a single GPU machine to a multi-GPU machine, ArrayFire has a big advantage. The ArrayFire device set function makes multi-GPU computing super simple. No need to mess with synchronization issues. ArrayFire automatically manages memory and queues up all GPUs in your system with a full workflow, ensuring good resource utilization. For multi-GPU machines to clusters, ArrayFire is, is the same as CUDA and OpenCL. There is not really any added benefit, and users write and manage their own MPI code. The third major feature is portability. This is perhaps the most recognizable difference between CUDA and OpenCL. CUDA only runs on NVIDIA GPUs, while OpenCL is the open industry standard that runs on AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, and other hardware devices. With respect to CUDA, there was a recent announcement at NVIDIA's GPU technology conference in Asia that said CUDA would become more open, and the press carried it as saying that CUDA would become open source. This is definitely a step that GPU programmers are happy to see, but it remains to be seen what this actually means. There are two comments that I'd like to make on this announcement. First, from what we can tell, parts of the CUDA compiler will be open source to a limited number of groups. These groups will likely try to build compiler adaptations that enable CUDA code to run on other devices if you use their compilers. From the announcement, it appears that the CUDA libraries, like Kublas and QFFT, will not be open source. This is a critical distinction because, as I show later on, libraries are key. Second, creating a compiler that can automatically generate tuned code for various hardware devices with very different architectures is extremely difficult. These kinds of projects continue to remain popular in hardcore academic research, but have yet to mature their way into actually widespread utility. Ocelot is an example research project in this category. Also, with respect to portability, CUDA does not provide CPU fallbacks. Currently, developers using CUDA typically put if statements in their code that distinguish between the presence or absence of a GPU device at runtime. In contrast with OpenCL, G CPU fallback is supported and makes code maintenance much easier. ArrayFire is fully portable. The same ArrayFire code runs on CUDA or OpenCL. The only difference is the version of ArrayFire library that you link against in your code. The main caveat here is that today, the OpenCL version of ArrayFire only supports a subset of the functionality available in the CUDA version. This is due to the fact that our CUDA code base has been around much longer. It is also due to the fact that there is less of an OpenCL software ecosystem, as we'll discuss next. The fourth feature that we're going to discuss is community. This is the feature that encompasses support, longevity, commitment, etc. As these things are hard to measure, we put together a proxy. It is interesting to look at the number of forum topics on NVIDIA's quorum, forum, CUDA forums at nearly 27,000 and AMD's OpenCL forums at 4,000. Also, on a neutral third-party site, Stack Overflow, and by the way, if you don't know Stack Overflow, you should, has tags for CUDA and OpenCL with the number of CUDA tags being over three times the number of open, OpenCL tags. As you would expect, there are many more people doing CUDA programming today due to the great investment NVIDIA has put into building the ecosystem for GPU computing. With respect to Accelerize, we have over 1,400 GPU topics on our forums, which is the largest community of GPU programmers supported by any software company. The next largest is the veteran HPC com company, PGI, which has 485 topics on their GPU forums. Community also has to do with the ecosystem and other tools. I will cover a discussion of those as they relate to the libraries in a moment. The fifth and final measure that, or feature that we're going to talk about is programmability. Both CUDA and OpenCL are low level. It is time consuming to do GPU kernel development in either of those platforms. The bulk of that time is often spent in redesigning algorithms to exploit data parallelism. This is why the entire GPU computing market has lately shifted a major focus towards programmability. To understand the landscape, let's look at this simple two-by-two two graph where we have faster versus slower technologies on the y-axis and time-consuming versus easy-to-use technologies on the x-axis. 
As a baseline, you can consider SSE or AVX instructions on the CPU as something that is time consuming to write and will end up, uh, end up giving you the data parallel performance that you can expect out of a GPU. Writing GPU kernels in CUDA or OpenCL leads to much faster code, but it is likewise time consuming to develop. In the opposite corner, compiler directives have recently become popular. The claim of these is that you can sprinkle a few prior friends in your code and that the compiler will figure out how to get the code to run well on the GPU. While in some cases you might get a little benefit, there is simply no compiler today that is capable of automatically generating good, fast code for GPUs from standard serial CPU code. Compilers simply can't figure out how to morph serial algorithms into data parallel algorithms. Which is why libraries are so key to GPU computing. In a library, you get access to a set of functions that have already been hand-optimized and tuned to exploit data parallelism. Libraries include within them the benefits of speed that come from writing kernels, but they're also written with ease of use in mind and merely require a similar level of intrusion as is required by the compiler directives. This is why ArrayFire has been and continues to be so successful. Libraries really make all the difference in GPU computing. To compare and contrast CUDA versus OpenCL, it is important to look at the comparison of libraries available. Raw math libraries available in CUDA include Kublas, 2FFT, Kula, and Magma. These are pretty much complete, providing the majority of all the routines necessary for dense matrix operations. CUDA also has CU sparse, which is a good start for sparse linear algebra routines, but still needs to mature. CUDA libraries run only on NVIDIA GPUs. NVIDIA does not provide libraries for OpenCL. Raw math libraries and AMD's OpenCL have matured a lot recently. With CL AMD BLAST and CL AMD FFT, you get the most of the important BLAST routines, Radix 2, 3, and 5 FFT routines. There's no LAPAC function support, and there are no sparse data support libraries. But a very important point is that AMD's libraries run not only on NVIDIA AMD devices, but on all OpenCL compliant devices, including NVIDIA GPUs. Due to these developments in AMD, Accelerize is proud to have recently supported OpenCL in both our Jacket products, which applies to MATLAB code, and our ArrayFire product, which applies to C, C++, Fortran, and Python. Our OpenCL support is new and not nearly as mature as our support of CUDA, but our initial OpenCL support is better than our initial CUDA support was when we first launched our CUDA products, and we expect OpenCL to continue to mature rapidly in the near future. So this concludes the slide portion of the presentation. In what follows, we will spend some time showing benchmarks of OpenCL versus CUDA in ArrayFire code, with a particular focus on the raw math libraries, just as we discussed. I would now like to introduce Vaughn, who is an expert GPU developer at Accelerize, who will lead us through the code and benchmarks. You can see the matrix multiplication uh, uh, benchmark over here. As you can see, the AMD outperforms the the, two, uh, the AMD GPU, which we bought for $250, outperforms in a, a Tesla GPU uh, that costs around $2,600. Uh, but the OpenCL library uh, is not actually u utilizing the complete uh, capabilities of the Tesla, NVIDIA Tesla GPU, but uh, the peak performance of both GPUs are uh, quite close, but uh, from a price to performance point of view, the OpenCL, or the AMD uh, graphics card uh, beats, beats the NVIDIA GPU over here. Next, we are looking at uh, two-dimensional FFTs. Uh, as you can see, uh, none of these have saturated yet, but we had to truncate the benchmark because uh, the uh, AMD GPU was running out of resources. It has uh, uh, far, far fewer mem uh, memory than uh, than the NVIDIA Tesla. And, and, in, uh, and in this case, the uh, NVIDIA GPU quite, uh, re uh, reaches a peak for power performance of about 800 gigaflops and uh, the AMD reaches about uh, nearly 200. And this is a, a financial example. We show we are trying to show this over here because this uh, showcases some of the many of the element-wise operations. Uh, it is just a combination of many element-wise operations, and we haven't uh, fully integrated our chip compiler into our OpenCL product yet. So that is why you see huge differences between the uh, OpenCL versions of uh, the NVIDIA GPU as well and the uh, CUDA version of the NVIDIA GPU. So once we integrate the JIT compiler, you, you would see uh, these, these numbers. Uh, 
to match i mean to be much closer yeah earlier we said uh, you can uh, take the same code and run across multiple uh, on uh, different libraries uh, as you can see on the left uh, this is this is this is the code for the opencl version which is exactly the same for the code on the uh, cuda version and uh, if you go to the, go to the next screen here you can see that this uh, the CUDA version is picking up the right libraries, uh, it's picking up the Kublas 450 and the necessary uh, CUDA libraries over here. And it's uh, linking against our uh, libaf.so, which is our CUDA version of the library. And if you go to the OpenCL version, it is picking up the libopencl and uh, it's using libafcl, which is the uh, 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 OpenCL version of our library. So, As you can see, uh, both of them are using the uh, same uh, same GPU. This is being run on uh, NVIDIA Tesla 2070, and uh, this one also is being run on the uh, same GPU. But the initial uh, we, we use some uh, different kind of sorting metric for both these uh, libraries. So you see, it's using a slightly different GPU 2070, but that's okay. And uh, Timings that you see are also uh, different because, like, our uh, CUDA version here uses uh, uses uses the JIT compiler and it is quite faster compared to the OpenCL version over here. So I think uh, this is what uh, what we plan for right now. So if you have any questions or if you want to look at any other code, please go ahead, and uh, I think we'll try to answer that right now. Okay, thanks for Pavan for uh, going through the benchmarks. It seemed like the overall take home messages from that are that AMD's BLAST library is very good. Um, we could say that AMD's FFT library has some room for improvement. And um, of course, the ArrayFire's OpenCL implementation needs to get its uh, legit compiler in. But that should be coming very, very soon. So um, we're just going to go through a few QA questions now. Um, and I guess that'll conclude the presentation. But let's go, let's go through these uh, questions real quick. So um, the first question that we have is, is what kind of ATI GPU was utilized to create the benchmarks? And if we have plans to use, um, to rerun the benchmarks with, with AMD's new graphics core next technology. The question, so we got a question here is, is um, of the questions asking how to use OpenCL or CUDA in array fire. Yeah, so the idea there is that if you're going to use, so the APIs for both libraries, for the CUDA library and the OpenCL library are the same. So um, if you just link against either the OpenCL library or link against the CUDA library, um, you're switching between OpenCL and, and CUDA. Awesome. Okay, good. Oh, we've got another question. So for Python code, is there a significant decrease on the performance? In comparison with C++ or Fortran, so I'll let I'll let Pavan answer that one. Uh, it, uh, it depends on the problem size. So there is some uh, initial overhead that needs to be overcome when you are running Python. But uh, when you are actually running a, a really large uh, what do you call it? really large problems, you the runtime is such that uh, you don't you don't see too much of a performance drop when you go, when you are going from C++ uh, to Fortran. Uh, to Fortran or either Python. So uh, yeah, I think we uh, passed over the, uh, one of the questions. Like one of the questions was what kind of ATI GPU was used. Uh, I think uh, we showed that in our benchmarks earlier, and uh, we used an uh, AMD HD6950 GPU, uh, which was the only G GPU that we have in uh, in our office. So. So another question uh, user is asking is, doesn't PJ have an x86 compiler for CUDA? That's uh, I think a good question, but uh, we haven't seen much uh, information from their side recently. They were talking about it uh, one or two years ago, but uh, I'm not sure if they are uh, completely pursuing the product. So I'm handing over to Gallagher to ha handle a few other questions. Ah, here's an easy one. Um, since ArrayFire has an OpenCL version, does that mean that it can run on the CPU as well as the GPU? Um, the answer there is yes. You just select uh, you just select the CPU device um, instead of the GPU device, and that'll work. 
There's a, what kinds of changes, if any, are required to get good performance out of OpenCL code across devices like NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel CPUs? Um, the answer there is that typically what you do is you write separate kernels for NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel, and you just select which kernel you're going to use at runtime, um, depending on which device is currently active. Okay, um, so we have a question. Does OpenCL ArrayFire work with all OpenCL hardware? Um, so we've tested open, our OpenCL implementation on top of NVIDIA hardware, AMD's uh, last generation GPUs. We fully, fully expect it to work with Graphics Core Next um, and also Intel Xeon processors. So we got a, another follow-up question. What kinds of CPUs does OpenCL run on? Um, so the answer to that is that um, certainly Xeon works, the Sandy Bridge, and that, and that uh, generalizes to anything, Pavan is telling me, anything to SSC2 and, and upwards. And then I believe it runs on AMD CPUs as well, at least the, the new generation. Ah, here's a good question. What do I need to install alongside ArrayFire OpenCL to make it work? What software needs to be present on users' machines when I want to deploy my application? Ah, okay, all right. So it appears, as, so Pavan is telling me that it's uh, hardware specific in each case. So depending on what kind of hardware it is, you need to install different software for ArrayFire. Actually, I'm going to let him chime in here. So uh, if you're using the Intel or AMD uh, devices, you'll be required to use their own uh, SDKs that they provide from the website. And you'll be, uh, if you're using an AMD GPU, you'll be required to install their Catalyst driver. So if you're using an NVIDIA, uh, uh, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, all you need to do is just install the NVIDIA driver that they provide you. You need not install the Oh, wait, you need to install the toolkit too. Yes, uh, they're in NVIDIA driver and their toolkit. And, and another thing uh, you need to uh, make sure is that uh, on Linux, uh, you have to go to slash etc open. Uh, I think I'll type that out in the. So just check out the, uh, the part that the page in the conference. You need to verify that all the, all the hardware that you want to run on has an ICD entry in that particular uh, folder. Uh, what about Windows? So, the, yeah, so I'm told that the win Windows versions uh, uh, are automatically installed when you install the toolkit. Hey, do we have any other questions? Okay, it's all quiet in the chat window, so I'm going to assume that's uh, the end of the question. So, um, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. I'd like to thank everybody for attending, and um, that concludes the webinar. Thank you very much.